This is Duke University. I'm Anne Pusey. I'm the chair of the Department of Evolutionary Anthropology at Duke University. We are in the new Jane Goodall Institute Research Center at Duke in the Department of Evolutionary Anthropology. The research center it houses data from Jane Goodall's study of chimpanzees in Tanzania, 50 years of data, and that data is still coming because the study is carrying on. Jane started in 1960 and she was there, you know, going out every day trying to find the chimps and then eventually finding them and then they were coming to this feeding area every day all through the 60s and then people started following them away from the feeding area as well. We're recording the daily lives of the same group of chimpanzees for 50 years. So we've got lives of many chimps that have, were observed from birth to death now. So there are records of well over 200 in different individual chimps now um, in those notes. We've gathered together all of the data that's been collected at Gombe here in that room through there. I was hired as a research assistant to follow mothers and infants and record maternal behavior and the, uh, infant development. This was something that Jane was really interested in, always had been ever since she'd started watching the chimps there. And by that time there were check sheets that we would fill in at recording what they did for about two hours. So I would follow a pair of a mother and infant for a couple of hours, writing things down every minute. Yes, I was 21 years old. I had just finished my final exams and kind of started to recover from that, and then I got on the plane and went to Africa. In the, in the 1970s and 80s, Jane Goodall was living in Dar es Salaam, but frequently visiting Gombe, and the data were being collected every day by Tanzanian field assistants. And she would bring it back to her house in Dar es Salaam and analyze it uh, with some assistants there. The data was still being collected every day. They were being brought to her house in Dar es Salaam, piled on shelves. And I asked Jane if I could analyze some of the data, so we started copying some of it, and I was going to bring it to Minnesota. But then I went to visit Gombe and her house in uh, Dar es Salaam and talked with her about it. And we were concerned that things, the data was just sitting in open shelves, and actually the, it was at some risk. And so I pulled out a stack of these files, and a mouse jumped out, jumped over my shoulder, and behind the files was this perfect nest that was made of strips of the edges of the pages of data. So uh, we realized that they, these data really were at risk. People weren't doing much with them there. And so we decided to bring them all to Minnesota where I could archive them and actively work with them and start computerizing the data from them from these notes. We're trying to digitize everything. So every piece of data from the check sheets is being entered into uh, our database. I work with the, um, all of the data that come out of, of Gombe as well as conduct some of my own research in the field. I gave Anne a phone call and she agreed to meet with me. She took me back to the, the archive and opened up these drawers and found these old uh, documents so that um, were literally older than I was and had been written by Jane Goodall and all these famous other names that I had, that I had heard of and um, it smelled like Africa and oh, it was just, it was, an, it was really intense. The archives are absolutely essential for developing the questions that I looked at in the field. So I would use the archives to find out when the peak hunting periods were, who the best hunters were, um, and who I, who I should be following when I would, when I would go into the field. Yeah, I, there's no way I could get at these questions without the longitudinal base, absolutely not. There's so much effort by so many people over so many years in these data. Produced by Duke University. Online at duke.edu.